cockapoo or cafapoo? Which pup is for you? Two of the cutest and littlest puppies in the adorable doodle dog family are the cavapoo and the cockapoo. Get ready for darling puppy overload. If you are ready to adopt a puppy, are you a cavapoo or a cockapoo family? Please review the suggested differences to help you make the choices. Number one, cavapoos and cockapoos are adorable, but there is a size difference between them. The super cute cavapoo weighs between 11 to 22 pounds and measures between 11 to 17 inches high, depending on their poodle parent, whether from a mini poodle or a toy poodle. These parental genes will help determine the height of the super cute cavapoo. The super adorable cockapoo weighs between 12 to 24 pounds. A cockapoo reaches between 10 to 15 inches tall. This differs slightly from the cavapoo, but such a small amount can be a huge difference when it comes to these smaller dogs. The cockapoo's height will also depend on their poodle parent's type and size. Inquiring about the poodle parents will help estimate how big the cavapoo or cockapoo will grow to be. Number two, are cavapoos and cockapoos healthy dogs? Is one more healthy than the other great ball of fuzz? Both of these breeds, because of the mix of poodle, Cocker Spaniel and King Charles Spaniel, they are both generally healthy. Their genes have a strong blend, which allows for hybrid vigor. Both of these breeds, Cavapoo and Cockapoo, have the poodle's high intelligence, which helps with puppy training, and the adorable fuzzy family member adapting to your lifestyle and home. Both the cavapoo and the cockapoo have long lives, but the cockapoo usually lives longer than the cavapoo. The cockapoo typically lives to around 14 to 18 years, while a cavapoo usually lives 13 to 15 years. Nutrition, exercise, and a loving environment, as well as their parents' genetics, play a factor on how long the cavapoo and the cockapoo live. Both the cavapoo and cockapoo are not usually prone to many health problems, though eye problems have popped up in both breeds. Since PRA has been genetically mapped, therefore PRC can be discovered through genetic testing in most cases. Sometimes a genetic mutation that causes PRA being shared amongst many breeds, including those that create these crossbreeds. Genetic testing to rule out the possibility of eye problems like PRA can be conducted. Often, many breeders have the genetic testing to rule out the possibility of eye problems like PRA. When buying a puppy of either breed, be sure to ask if genetic testing has been performed. At the very least, request that an eye exam is given to the puppy before you purchase it. What is PRA and what does it do to my cockapoo or cavapoo? 
Progressive Retinal Atrophy, PRA, is a group of degenerative diseases that affect the eye's photoreceptor cells in the retina. The two main photoreceptor cells of the retina are the rod cells and the cone cells. Broad cells are responsible for vision in low light conditions and for detecting and following movement. Cone cells are responsible for detecting color. There are two main forms of PRA recognized in dogs, an early onset or inherited form, also called retinal dysplasia, which is typically diagnosed in puppies around two to three months of age and a late onset form that is detected in adult dogs, usually between the ages of three and nine years. Since the disease is inheritable, when a dog develops PRA, its parents and siblings should also be removed from breeding programs, even if they do not show any signs of the abnormality. Additionally, certified eye exams performed by a board certified veterinarian ophthalmologist can be done to help detect early signs and remove affected dogs from the breeding pool. What are the signs of PRA? PRA is not a painful condition, so is rarely noticed in its early stages of development. The first sign that is usually noticed in a dog that has PRA is night blindness. Affected dogs tend to be nervous at night, may be reluctant to go into dark rooms, or may bump into things when the light is dim. Pet owners with dogs that are developing PRA often observe that their pet's eyes have become very reflective when light shines on them and that the pupils are more dilated than normal. Both eyes are affected. In some cases, the pet owner may not notice anything abnormal when their dog is at home, but may gradually notice that their pet has become clumsier when in unfamiliar surroundings. For dogs with the inherited form, the initial sign may be a loss of day vision or could be complete blindness. Number five, how does PRA affect my kavapoo or cockapoo? As PRA progresses, your dog's vision will gradually worsen until he becomes completely blind. For the average family pet, blindness is not as significant as it would be in a human. Kavapoo or kakapoo rely more on other senses, such as smell, and are able to move around well in their home environment, as long as furniture and other objects are not moved around. In the later stages, cataracts can develop. Number six, how fast does PRA develop and how is it detected? The speed of development depends on the breed and the form of the disease. In most cases, the dog experiences a complete loss of vision over a period of one to two years. If your kavapoo or kakapoo appears to have vision loss based on a general ophthalmic examination that shows sluggish pupillary light responses and has dilated pupils, your veterinarian may suspect PRA. Your veterinarian will usually advise a referral to a veterinarian ophthalmologist for confirmation of the diagnosis by means of additional sophisticated testing, such as an electroretinogram, ERG, to rule out other causes of blindness. In the early stages, it may be difficult to observe any obvious changes to the retina, but as the disease progresses, The examination of the back of the eye with an ophthalmoscope 
will show increased reflectivity of a portion of the retina called the tapetum lucidum. Changes in the optic nerve and changes in the retinal blood vessels. The ERG is sensitive enough to diagnose PRA in Kavapu or Kakapu even before they begin to show obvious symptoms. In some areas, genetic screening for inherited PRA may be available. This test may help detect carriers of the disease. Number seven, what is the treatment for PRA for your Kakapu or Kavapu? There is currently no effective treatment available for PRA. To date, the use of antioxidant supplements or vitamins has not shown any measurable effect of this disease. Although these supplements are not harmful to your pet and may reduce stress on the lens cells and delay cataract formation. Number eight, what are the personality differences between the cockapoo and the cavapoo? Both are considered to be good and friendly dogs who get along well with small children. The cockapoo and the cavapoo are both considered to be healthy, although there are a number of differences between cockapoo and cockapoo. The cockapoo is more active with bundles of energy and might make a great family member if you have an active lifestyle. The cockapoo do not stay home alone well and can quickly develop separation anxiety from their owners and family. Kavapu is more laid back and does not require as much grooming. How much time you want to spend on your new puppy will likely play a big factor in which puppy you select. Number nine, what are the grooming differences between the cockapoo and the cavapoo? Regarding grooming, the cockapoo and the cavapoo differ widely. The cavapoo is considered low maintenance. Many cavapoos are cut to keep their coat short, in which case they only require the occasional bath. If a longer coat is preferred, weekly brushing is required to prevent tangles from forming. The cockapoo's coat grows very quickly. It requires both frequent clipping and brushing to keep the coat from becoming tangled. If a cockapoo's coat is more similar to a cocker spaniel than a poodle, frequent bathing will be required to keep the long, silky coat clean. Please like and subscribe to learn about our latest Doodle Dog video. Visit www.doodledogdiaries.com to learn on our blogs and laugh at the dog jokes.